Hello and welcome to Brooklands, where motorsport began in the UK and really made a big dent in sort of automotive culture here in the UK. Electric cars are making that same change and thanks to you for either looking at this car or getting this car on your driveway. We love the BYD Dolphin because it's making a splash in terms of value for money and what it can achieve. If you are thinking about this car, we think it's perfect for younger families, for people looking for that nippy city car to bounce backwards and forwards from the shops and do the occasional long distance drive. So if you've got any questions about that, get in touch with us and one of the team will get you sorted. So your BYD Dolphin comes with a very standard key. However, there are a couple of little bits that we just want to point out to you. You can open the car by pressing the buttons on the key and getting it open and shut that way. But also with the key in the pocket, there's a little button here in some models. What that'll do is it'll soft close and soft lock the car as well. So if you've got your keys and your bag or in your pocket and you're struggling, you just press that button, the car will open and shut for you, you're all good. One of the other things with this car is that it's very normal. There's a start stop button once you're inside and you're all good. However, if you're getting out of the car and leaving, one of the things you need to make sure of is that the car is off. If the car is on, I'm just gonna show you that. And we get out. What will happen is that the wing mirrors won't shut and the car will still be on. The door will lock but the car will still be on. And that's how you'll know with that wing mirror out. If I jump in, tap that start stop again, close the door, lock it. You'll see that those wing mirrors fold in and you're all good. So when we come around to the back of the car, what we'll find is that it's a standard little button at the back here that you just lift the car up. And what we've done is we've taken the parcel shelf out the rear, just so you can see how deep you can get that boot to be. One of the really cool things about this car is it's got three Isofix points. So if you have more than two children or you've got two children and a friend, you can absolutely take all three of them in the car with you. When you get into the boot of the car, what you'll also find in here are things like your Octopus driver pack. And in there you'll find your driver line number. Now the driver line is what you phone in case you've got any issues. Also how you book MOTs, servicing, and also get your tires changed. You'll also find a three pin cable from BYD and that's for any emergency charging that you need to do, maybe an Airbnb or out on the road in a small place. It's just a three pin like you'd find with your kettle uh, or your phone charger or something like that. The main cable you'll be using most of the time is what we call a type two, which is this cable here, which is in this round bag. We're gonna show you how that works when we show you charging. The cool thing about this cable is it's now European standard. So everywhere in Europe charges on type two and you'll be able to charge at a plethora of charging stations all around the UK and Europe, especially if you start looking at the Electroverse as well. Finally, if you've got a home charger, most of the time this cable will be attached already as well. But some people go for what they term an untethered charger, which means there's a connection for your wall and a connection for your car. If that's the case, you use this cable here. So at some point, you're probably going to have to charge your BYD Dolphin. Now charging is really simple with an electric car. You have this end here, which is called Type 2, and this is European standard now. You just push your flap open, and underneath you'll find two rubberized caps. Just pull the top one, that's for your slower charging at your home. The one at the bottom there is for road trips. We're just gonna slide that cable in now, and if you're on Intelligent Octopus Go, you're gonna walk away, and the car, the charger, and our tariff are all gonna to work together to get you the cheapest and best charging. Once you've locked your car, the cable is gonna be locked in place. To unlock, you're just gonna unlock the car again. That should unlock the cable. You should pull straight out, cover the cap back up to pop it away. Pop your rubberized cap back on here, close your flap, and away you go. So we've spoken through charging, and that's one of the only things you need to add to your car is electricity. There's one other thing that you need to keep an eye on, which is your washer fluid, which is underneath the bonnet in your BYD Dolphin. To open that, there's a little hatch or a little lever just next to your knee on the driver's side. We're gonna pull it twice because it's a double catch. And then all we're gonna do is just like any standard car, we're just gonna lift that bonnet up for us. We're gonna put that here and there we go. Now you've got some 
coolant for the computer, the battery management system, some other bits. You've got your brake fluid here as well. You shouldn't touch these in any situation. So if you think you've got an issue, get in touch with the driver line, they'll get you sorted. The only thing you are gonna do is the washer fluid here, and you can fill that up when you need to. To shut the bonnet, again, all you're gonna do is push up, drop it down, one nice big drop, double check it's down, and you're all good. So we're now inside your BYD Dolphin. Now we're gonna chat through how to make sure you get the most out of this. There are some things that we'll sort of skip over, things that are very normal. A little bit around sort of setting your sort of cruise speed and things like that. You can have a play with that when you get to the car. But the main things really to get you up and running are to point out where things like the start stop button are and what all the buttons and switches do and have a wee play with the voice recognition software as well. To get the car started, you pop your right foot on the brake and then you'll see there's a start stop button just behind the steering wheel on the left hand side. So before we do that, we're gonna get the car ready to go. So down on your right hand side, there are some buttons for moving the seat backwards, forwards, up and down. Now on the right hand side, once we've got that set up, you're also gonna to want to have to do your mirrors. And that's just on that little ball section in the middle there, that circular section there. You can move them left and right, and you can choose which mirror you wanna do underneath. Your car's now all ready to rock and roll, and you should be good. Again, with your foot on the brake, after you've pressed the start stop button, you're ready to make a move. So what we're gonna do is push up into R, or pull down into D. To pop back into park, we're just gonna tap on the end there, and you're probably never really going to use neutral in the car. All of these buttons are fairly self-explanatory. Things like your hazards, what mode you want, which we cycle through, eco, normal and sport on the dash there. A way to change your regen settings. We would absolutely recommend that you have it on standard and let the car coast when you're on the motorway. But if you're in the city, turn it up into high so you're not using the brake pedal to slow the car down. You're just coming off the throttle and the car will slow down by itself. Some auto for the air conditioning, on off for the air conditioning, and then also in the morning when you wanna get that windscreen nice and heated up really quickly, tap that one there. And then finally, the volume for your music as well. This one also goes in and out to be able to turn on and off that system there. Finally, you've got your automatic hold down the bottom here your park brake, and then also turning off all the safety toys. We would suggest you never touch that and keep that on the entire time. This screen is where all the main stuff on your BYD happens. This screen stays fairly similar the entire time, shows you your speed, conditions of the car, where you'd have maybe warning issues or things like that come up. This screen is where you do everything else. All of this should work with Apple CarPlay as well, and that depends on which socket you plug it in down here. I'm going to tell you it's the right one there that's got the little USB sign on it, rather than the one that's just got the power. To get the heating all turned on, you can do that through here. Turn it up and down, and also you'll see your heated rear wing mirrors as well, along with your heated seating. But first up, we're going to talk about smart charging and making sure that on Intelligent Octopus Go, you're in the right mode. Now, if you're on Intelligent Octopus Go, we absolutely think you should be. It's one of the best ways to guarantee the cheapest and greenest energy into your car all the time. You wanna leave reservation charging off completely. If you're on standard Octopus Go, you absolutely do want to turn on reservation charging and you wanna set the time to start at half past 12, take off the charge to 100%, and charge it up till half past four in the morning. Now, if you've just used your car fairly normally, that should be more than enough to get back up to a really good amount of charge, ready to rock and roll again. Now, as I said, there's a whole load of stuff in here for you to play with. Your music, your Spotify, the camera around your vehicle, which you can have a play on here. But really, actually, that's for you to have a sit down and work out and have a play with. But one of the coolest features is the BYD Assistant, where we say, hi, BYD. Close the driver's window. Now, you can probably hear from my accent that I'm fairly Scottish. We're gonna open that window for you there as well. Hi, BYD. Open the driver's side window.
you can see that I have a Scottish accent and a lot of the time these cars don't really seem to be able to listen and understand me too well, but this seems to be really intuitive, really clever. You've got some storage space here. You've got your wireless charging port here, some other bits for drinks bottles and whatnot. And also this section here, if your key ever runs out of battery, place it in here to turn the car on. So finally, one of the cool things about the BYD screen is that it might not be that you like a landscape screen. So you can press this button here and the screen will rotate. And you also have that button on the steering wheel. So if Sam reaches forward, presses that there, you'll find that the screen's gonna rotate back and we're all good. So there you have it. You're completely up to speed with your BYD Dolphin. We can't wait to see what you use the car for. So get in touch, ask us questions, and send us photos of where you've been. That helps us stay up to date and make sure we're giving you the most relevant information.